A government oil company in the United Arab Emirates has opened the country's first solar-powered gas station in Dubai. The service station is covered with solar panels that can generate about 30% more energy than the station needs to power the pumps. The excess power is then directed back into the city's electric grid. And although the UAE is OPEC's fourth biggest oil producer, it has made a push to turn itself into a hub for renewable energy. To talk more about green energy, we have an, an American-Israeli solar pioneer, Yose Abramowitz, is the president and CEO of Energia Global Capital, as well as co-founder of the Arava Power Company, is an activist and a former candidate for president of Israel. We thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Erica. But let's talk about why you're here in America. You have a big day tomorrow. Tell us why. Yeah, tomorrow I'm in Washington uh, with the White House. We're working with the administration to see how the U.S. and Israel can work together to advance economic development in the Middle East, as well as Africa on renewables. And uh, it's an important to boost U.S. jobs because there are things to sell, like solar panels and inverters, and also to try to stop the spread of jihadism. And then the day after that is the 100th day of the Trump administration, and there's going to be a massive climate march on Washington to try to keep the U.S. in the Paris climate agreements. And so that's something that you are going to participate in. Yeah, I was on the Israeli delegation to the Paris climate uh, negotiations, so I feel strongly it's important that everybody stays in. Even though it is Shabbat? Well, you know, this is about saving lives, right? We're, we're, we're allowed to, to break the Sabbath. We're not really breaking the Sabbath. We're walking, right? Um, but because it's a much higher value to try to save lives, millions of people's lives are threatened every year now by climate change, by the extreme droughts, by the supercharged monsoons. And so uh, we all have to stand across all the, the faiths to be able to say uh, enough is enough. And you have said that you feel like climate change, which has caused droughts in certain areas, actually fuels jihadism. Oh, yeah. No, you, Explain you, you, that. You, if you look at sub-Sahara Africa and, and, and you look where the Islamic fundamentalists are making headway, they go in where there's despair. They go, they, they go in where there's extreme poverty. And often there isn't other choices uh, for, for these populations. You have to give them hope. You have to give them water. You have to give them energy. You have to, give them, uh, you have to help with the economy. And so uh, Israel's really good at development, particularly in Africa. And we, we in Israel could be a superpower of goodness if we work together with the United States to bring water, energy, and agriculture to these countries. However, when you do focus on Israel, it seems the percentage of green energy truly being used to power there, it's very low. So unfortunately, the state of Israel is only 3% powered by the sun. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is, is that from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea, we're at 70% powered by the sun during the day and we'll soon be at 100%, which really should be the model for Israel and Israel should be the model for the Middle East and, and Africa. All right, let's talk about something. You said you are calling for a day of rest, hmm. um, saying that it could have a greater impact than the Paris Agreement. So first explain how, why. Look, we... We're so fortunate, right? We, 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 we in, in, in the Western world, we, we, we have our cars, we have our air conditioners, so, you know, we have basically everything we need, right? And these, these, these require energy. And so every time we take advantage of our abundance, we're actually causing harm. But if you've ever been to Israel on, uh, you know, on Shabbat or on Yom Kippur, you see that there's almost no traffic. So on Yom Kippur, there's no traffic at all. If every faith community would cut back one-seventh of their consumption, their transportation, their work, the earth will be back in balance. And so shouldn't we, the Jewish people, set an example? So you're saying take one day and literally have it be a day of rest where you're not using anything that yeah. could pollute our world. That's the revolution. That's the revolution. So, you know, as a Jew, we're, uh, you know, I'm very proud to participate in the climate march, not only to say stay in the Paris agreements and have more renewables, but, you know, it's in all of our hands and there are things that we can do to, to cut back. And really quick, you, you gave us one thing, but what can our viewers also consider in terms of being able to reduce our own footprint? 
People should be switching to hybrid cars and uh, electric cars. We need to cut back on our, on our meat. When I fly, here I am flying for a climate march, I do carbon offsets. Uh, I'm working on a book now, and uh, you know, we'll try to outline what, what each and every one of us uh, can do. But we in the Jewish community, I think we need to think holistically about our values and deliver our values. And the State of Israel also needs to do, needs to do more. All right, excellent. Yosei Abramowitz, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Very Erica. good insight, and good luck at the march tomorrow. Thank you.